Uh, Jolting Jonathan with Mad Science of Southern Massachusetts and Rhode Island. This time around, we actually asked a great question that was actually sent to us by the son of one of our Facebook friends. Uh, Brayton Seymour is a seven-year-old out in New York State, and Brayton actually asked this really, really great question. He asked his dad, who is an old friend of mine from way back in elementary school, he said, Dad, why is it that when you mix two chemicals, they change color? And his dad said, you know what, you should probably send that into Mad Science and see what Jolting Jonathan says. So they did, and it was kind of neat, because that's a great question for a kid, and, and it really gets you thinking. And what the reason is, actually, is because there's a chemical reaction. When that happens, we have a chemical reaction. But there are a lot of other things that can happen that show us that there's been a chemical reaction. And I asked you what other things, in addition to something changing color, can show that a chemical reaction has taken place. I asked if something makes bubbles, uh, if it changes temperature, or if it forms a completely new chemical, a new substance. Which one of those shows that a chemical reaction has taken place? And the answer, really simply, was all of them. All of the above. And I want to show you guys a little bit about that. So, in order to do that, first thing I have is I have some water, and I just added a little bit of blue food coloring just to make it a little bit easier to see. And now I'm going to take oil, just regular old cooking oil, and I'm going to pour it into the water. Now do water and oil mix? No, no they don't. As you see, that solution that I have right there, it automatically starts to separate because they don't mix. So do we think a chemical reaction has taken place? No, there's no chemical reaction at all. And Brayden asked me about color. So what I have here is I have a little bit of water, and I have a chemical called the universal indicator. I'm just going to pour a little bit of that in there. And we get this funky color. All right. Let's pour a little bit of this chemical in there and see what happens. If you look, it starts to get red. Because we're changing the color. We're having a chemical reaction take place. Now, I'm mixing the chemicals and I'm adding a little bit of a base. Now, here I'm going to add a little bit of an acid. And as you see, it changes back into purple because that chemical right there, we have a chemical reaction taking place. So we get some color changes. So that, in fact, does show that chemical reactions have taken place when we get some color changes. Now this one's really a lot of fun. We talked about bubbles. What I have here is a container full of vinegar, and I have a little bit of baking soda. I'm just going to pour the baking soda right in the vinegar, and if you look, we get bubbles. That's because a chemical reaction has taken place. This one, you're going to have to take my word for it. But I have some water in this container right here, and it's just room temperature. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. And here I have a special kind of salt called calcium chloride. I'm going to take the calcium chloride. I'm just going to pour a little bit of that in there. We're going to give it a quick stir. And already, I can feel that water starting to heat up. Now, I, I know you're saying, why would we want a chemical reaction that heats things up? And the reason is, believe it or not, Calcium chloride is the same stuff you put on your driveway. It's ice melt. And what happens is that chemical reaction, as we've all seen in the wintertime, is when you mix that calcium chloride with water, and snow is, and ice are made out of water, it heats up. It gets really, really warm. It's pretty cool stuff. And that's what causes your ice to melt. Now, this is a really, really fun one. I have a chemical right here called polyvinyl alcohol. And polyvinyl alcohol is a type of liquefied plastic. I'm just going to pour some polyvinyl alcohol inside this container right here. And then... I'm going to add a little bit of paint, just because I want to make it so it's a little bit easy for you guys to see. I'm going to add a little bit of paint and give it a nice stir. And then I'm going to add a chemical. Can you see that nice pink color right there? Now we're going to add a chemical called sodium borate. We're just going to put a little bit of sodium borate in there. And something's starting to happen. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. We are getting ooey, gooey slime. It has changed to a completely different substance because of that chemical reaction. Look at that, just messy, yeah. We made slime, and that is because there's a chemical reaction. So if you answered D, you were correct. All of the above, those are all ways that we know that a chemical reaction has taken place. And this week, tell you what, I want my Facebook friend of the week, Brayton Seymour, it is you, little dude. Thank you for sending in that awesome question. Everybody else out there, if you have a question you would like to see the answer to, something you're dying to know about, why don't you write it on our Facebook page. Send us an email. It's all right there. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. We hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time.